All right, okay, none of my baits have been touched overnight, so we're gonna have a little sit down now, gonna have a think about it, and find out what we can do to um, improve our chances. Be back in a moment. All right, so I'm gonna start um, rebaiting one of my rods, and first thing I'm gonna do is remove the old bait. In the lake it goes. But the reason I've got a towel on my lap is because I like to dry everything down before I put everything back into a solid bag. I will be putting this rig into a solid bag before throwing it out and um, wait for the wind to die down. Now basically anything that's wet that goes into, well anything that's been in the lake shall we say and is wet with actual water. This will go into the PVA bag and start melting the PVA bag before it's even had a chance to be cast out. So I like to make sure that everything is really dried out before I even attempt to bring a PVA bag anywhere close to any of my rigs. So I'll always spend a couple of minutes just drying everything out, making sure it's all bone dry, and I mean absolutely bone dry before I put it in that PVA bag. So I've got about a foot of tubing coming up the line, going onto the easy drop off system. I don't know whether you can see that from there. But we've got the easy drop off system on there with a two ounce, 2.5 ounce lead into a swivel. Then we've got an anti-tangle sleeve on there and we've got about eight inches of N-Trap 15 pound coated braided line with a size eight micro barbed hook with a knotless knot tied onto the end of it and just a simple hair rig. One of my favorite rigs is just, is just a simple hair rig. I, you know, I've put a tiny amount of tungsten and instead of just putting it as a blob, I've actually put it going about an inch over the line. And then that, what that will help do is it'll either pin it to the bottom, depending on the bait I'm using, or if I'm using something like a, a pop-up, I don't always like it just to hinge and just come off of the, the bottom. I sometimes like it just to have that little bit of weight so it sits almost like that in the water. So it's literally coming up a few inches off of the bottom rather than just that hinged section. <clears throat> and what I find that that sometimes does is just gives that bit of movement in the water like that. And then hopefully the fish will see it and find it as a moving particle. Oxy ducks and geese and everything else around there. I think it's mating season because I've been at it all bloody night. Keeps us awake until about three, four o'clock this morning. Also, all you could hear is geese. But yeah, that's, that's the method of how, I, of how I use that. If I wanted to pin it to the bottom, I would have put a split shot on there and then I would have wrapped it in the tungsten to give it that extra bit of weight. Uh, that's the method to my madness. It's already caught me one fish today on this trip. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be putting out on the second rod just yet. I'm still contemplating whether to put a method feeder out and see whether that works another idea, another method, and I'm even contemplating maybe changing one of the rigs to a zig. Um, again, my dad's a match fisherman, and he told me the other day that he was hard on the bottom for most of the day and didn't catch a thing. He started altering his rigs and started coming up in the water and finding him about the midsection. So it might be an idea. I know the water's still not that warm, but that's where the thermal layering may be. So that's another idea for later on. Anyway, for now, let's get this baited up. Let's get it back out there because I'm not going to catch a fish otherwise. So yeah, these are coated in one of the DNA glugs. I'll have to get back to you on what one it is because it wasn't actually my one. Someone gave me some to try out and I really like the smell. So I gave my boilies a good coating in it. And there we go. They are absolutely stinking. So I've got different kinds of boilies in there. I just put um, 
I had about two or three different half bags. I just whacked them all in together, chucked them all in there. They're all stinking of the same stuff now, the DNA glug that I've put on it. And they're not stinking at all of what they originally were, so it doesn't really matter. So these are gonna be high, high leakage because they've been sitting in this for a good couple of months. I wish you could smell that. They're gonna bring out smell of vision one of these days and you'll be able to smell all the exciting smells that we anglers have to uh, put up with on a daily basis. <laughs> Some of them not so nice. <laughs> Was that a bit too strong for you, mate? <laughs> it's an acquired smell, obviously. So I'm gonna be using one of these new Avid gated needles. Now, if you've not seen these before, I've just done a review of it on them and I will put the link up in one of these corners. I can't remember which side it goes on. I can't even remember what colour to pick up half the time. So, but if you haven't seen these before, please go and check out the video. Again, totally independent. I bought these myself. There we go, all different colours. We've got five of them in total. We've got splicing needles, we've got drills, we've got needles, we've got gated needles. We've got them all here. So yeah, go check the video out, guys. And don't forget, while you're there, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> really helps me out, though. No, joking aside, though, hitting yeah, that like yeah. button really does help me out. And you need a young belt, too. Right, so we've got one of these boilies. And the next thing I'm going to use is a pop-up topper. I'm just going to get the scissors yeah, cut it in. and I'm going to take a chunk off of that just to give it a nice flat edge. I'm going to get one of these and we're also going to take this down a little bit. I don't want it over buoyant. And we're going to go through the topper first. And we're going to go through the boilie. And we've got a nice, as you can see there, nice little doubled up bait. This is going to go on my simple hair rig. There we go. Now we're just going to finish that off. With one of the bait stops. The problem with this DNA stuff is it is so sticky. That sticky that I can't even get a bait stop in it. Right, here we go. My fingers are just sticking together all over the place. Wicked. And as you can see there, there's the finished rig. Got the topper on there, we've got the boilie on there. Now what that's going to do is as it goes in the water, that's going to sit basically on the bottom and just waft about, almost like a wafter. But that's hopefully going to do the job. We're going to attach that back in there. We're going to stick that in a PVA bag and we're going to launch it out there. Right, so inside the PVA bags, I, I always keep my PVA bags in an airtight lockable container like this, nice and waterproof. I know they're not going to get destroyed by the rain if I accidentally leave them out, as long as I put the lid back on that is. Now, I'm only casting out a short distance. It's only, I don't know, 30 yards at the most. It's not that far to the uh, island out there. So I don't need an over, you know, I don't need one of the small bags. I don't care how aerodynamic it is because I know I'll be able to put it on the spot every time because it's it's a short cast. So if you see this bag looking a little bit sm uh, messy or you think that's a big bag, I'm only going short distance. If I was going a lot further, then I'll be using a smaller bag. I'll be using a smaller bait to fill it with rather than big bigger pellets or things like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, aer the aerodynamics of a PVA bag all depends on how far you're going to cast it. 
So remember that, you know, if, if you're only going 30, 40 yards, it's not so much of a problem. If you're going to try and pelt it across the other side of the lake, I'll use a small bag, I'll use a smaller lighter bait, like a crumb or micro pellets or something like that. I mean, as you can see here, I've got an assortment of pellets. There's boily crumb in there, there's ground bait in there, there's, it's just a nice mixture of everything. And that is my general mixture that I will use here, there and everywhere else. Again, if I'm doing distance fishing, I change my tactics and I'll have a different kind of bait set up. So what we're gonna do here is, first of all, I've got some ground bait. It's mainly a method mixture, but I'm just gonna put a handful of this in the bottom first of all. It's not been prepared, it's, it's, it's totally as it comes out of the bag. But we're going to put just a little section of that in there first of all. And this has been sitting on the towel now for quite a while, this is bone dry. That goes in there. So that goes in there and then I'll just hold that again I'll hold the weight against the bag and then start adding some of the pellet. I don't go hundred mile away. Right, once I've got a layer of that in there, I'll now drop the weight in there and I'll hold the line roughly in the centre of the bag. Now what I'm going to do is put a bit more ground bait in there. Followed with one more handful of pellets. So now you can see the bag's roughly three quarters of the way filled. I'm now going to pinch that around give it a bit of a shake up, try and get everything down in all the gaps, nooks and crannies. And give that a twist. And as you can see, I've not got prepared at all before I've tried doing this video. All right, <laughs> PVA tape. I don't like the string, I prefer the actual tape. tape. What I'll do is I'll hold that in that hand across there and then I'll whip it around going down in towards the bag rather than up towards my fingers as that will make everything that wee bit tighter. All right, once I've done that a few times around the bag I will then do a couple overhand or granny knots. Two or three of them, just to secure everything down and make sure it doesn't all fall off as I'm casting. All right, once that's done, we're then gonna yeah, cut off the excess. Now, with this bit up here, very, very important to keep an eye on the line while you're doing this. So what I'll do is I'll hold it away, the line, and pull it away, and then cut down and around the line. Being ever so careful not to catch it. So we're nearly there, we're nearly there. Now what we're gonna do is get the edges and just tamper them down. Just pushing everything into the center. And we're going to wet this, fold that down into it, just hold that there for a few seconds and do exactly the same on the other side. Just tampering that down 
making sure it all compresses and compacts. So as you can see, we've got a nice loose bit there. We're gonna lick that again. Yeah, not very nice. Leaves a little bit of an aftertaste in your mouth, but a cup of tea will soon solve that. And then, well, didn't want to do that. And there's our PVA bag. Right, one last thing before we send it out. Just going to stab a few holes in with this with a baiting drill or a needle or whatever you have to hand. And what that is going to do is just help the water get into the bag and dissolve at a quicker rate. And there we have it. Let's get it out there. All right, now to get this out there. All right, so I'm gonna go for the corner of the island over there. Let's see how we get on. Salty breakfast out on the rod 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 rod